Today we're going to talk about aids and aiding, aiding our horse, aid, aid simplified. This is something that you're going to hear people talk about, but they're not always real clear on it. And I find people aren't always super clear on what that is, aids and aiding. We're going to see if we can make that real, real easy, real simple for you. One thing you have to really understand about horses, it's in the little things. Less is more. Now sometimes in the beginning with horses, we don't always have our horse's attention. Sometimes we're not always real significant to our horses. And there is a time and there is a place where people might get a little bit firmer with their horse to clarify an idea or to make their intention clear. But in the end, less is more. And that which is forced cannot be beautiful. Does that make sense? Especially with horses. If it's looking forced, it's not going to look beautiful. The thing about aiding horses is this. It's all about being aware of ourselves, our horse, and our body. And if I don't have awareness of where my body parts are, I'm surely not going to know where my horse's body parts are. So many people are fighting gravity first before they can actually guide their horse or give their horse feel. So I'm going to show you some positions that I see people get into with their horse, and you might consider if these are things you've seen or if these are things that you might do yourself. And in order to aid effectively, we need to be centered and in the right position. One thing that I will see on a fairly regular basis is this. I see people sit, sitting with their legs up here. And we call that a chair seat for a reason. Now all of you right now that are sitting in your chair, stand up for a second. Get up from your chair. Your feet are in front of you. Now sit back down. Now stand up again. Now sit back down. Did you end up getting your feet underneath you a little bit more? Yeah. Because when your feet are up here, it's really hard to stand up. And you might see me roll my shoulders to stand up. You might see me use my elbows to help get momentum to stand up. If I have to do this, I'm always behind the motion of my horse. I call that riding in a hole. I don't want to be behind my horse in a hole. I want to be on top of my horse. We need to make sure that we ride in a saddle that allows a centered position. Think straight line, shoulder, hip, heel. Like an athletic ready position. If you're finding that you've got your feet up here and you slowly start riding back here, the next thing that happens is, because I'm behind the motion of my horse, people start drawing their hands back. So now you're riding here. So now I drive his back down, and he can't lift up and elevate underneath me. So an exercise you can do would be to take your knees off the saddle. Now I could do this at a trot. I could even do this up at a canter. I could take my thigh off the saddle. Lay it back down. We could do it at a trot. Lift your thigh up, put it back down. You could lift one thigh up, put it back down. Lift the other thigh up, put it back down. But the idea is to get your femur down and back. Get your knee down and back. So my leg is under me. All of our joints in our body, our ankle, our knee, our hip joint, our elbow, and our wrist should be in what we call a neutral position. So if I'm forcing my heel down, look what that does to my horse's back and his head. If I force my heel down, I start to sit heavy on their back. He starts to lift his head up and he looks back at me and it's like you're getting punched in the stomach or in the back and he's saying, ouch. Don't do that. So my horse gives me feedback. So when I'm moving him out, if I get that leg back, I'll feel him come up over his back and lift. 
he will feel free and have a swinging motion, an easy swinging motion. For those of us that kind of ride with a chair seat, check your saddle. And something to think about, if I'm going to go on a long trail ride, I'm going to pick a saddle accordingly. So I might pick a western saddle, trail saddle. If I'm going to pony a horse, I might pick a western saddle because I want that weight displacement. I want to spread my weight out a little bit. But if I'm going to ride my horse in the arena, if I'm going to work on eating and some soft feel sort of exercises and be riding for less than an hour, much of the time I pick a dressage saddle, but I pick a saddle that allows my leg to be underneath me. If there's one thing you get out of this demonstration today, and this is a game changer, get a saddle that centers your leg up so you're up over your feet. When your leg goes here and you get nervous, as a human, we have an innate Re re reflex to get our head over our feet. So when I see people with riding chair seat with their leg forward and they get nervous, you know what they do? They pitch. Do any of you do that? Yeah. Because you're trying to get your head over your feet. Some exercises we could do to get started. I might go palm down. Maybe I move my horse out a little bit. Roll your shoulder. All of you, feel free to give it a try. Roll your shoulder. Open your shoulder. Breathe. Lift your sternum. Lifting the sternum is so important. If I drop that down, look what I do. My horse shuts down. You see a disruption of his rhythm. So I want you to work on rolling those shoulders. Switch sides. Roll those shoulders. You could go hands straight up in the air like this. Lift up. Lift your sternum. See, when you're riding your horse and you lift your arm up and you ride, you sit the trot, you're starting to engage your abdomen more. If you're riding along like this, you're not using your abdomen. That's so important. The abdomen, our center, is so important the Germans have a term for that. It's called Kreutz Aids. Kreutz Aids means lower back seat weight. It's also called the invisible aids. So once I get centered up and I feel that my abdomen is engaged, let me give you some tricks and tools that you can use to ride with your center, ride with your Kreutz Aids. So here it is. Number one, be able to squeeze the rain like water out of a sponge. And I could squeeze the rain in time with this front feet, right front, left front, right front, left front. See, I could just squeeze as that foot's coming off, right front, left front. I could squeeze both reins. If I'm trotting and I'm doing a symmetrical gait, if I wanted to get him to lift his head up, as I stand up, I could slightly drive with my leg, slightly squeeze the rein as I come up, up, see? So what I'm doing is I'm using both reins with a squeezing and releasing manner as I'm out of the saddle. Besides squeezing the rein, you can use your abdomen. Pretend you're about to get hit in the stomach with a soccer ball. It's too late to move. There's a soccer ball coming. It's too late to move, right? So you're going to get hit in the stomach. Uh-oh, what do you do? You go like this. You squeeze your hands, you set your elbows, and you tighten up your abdomen. I want everybody to try that. Come on. So, pretend you're going to get the wind knocked out of you. What do you do? Uh-oh, too late to move. Tighten up. Now, we're not going to hold that. We're going to ask and release. We could ask firmer and release, but we're not going to hold that. So we're going to squeeze the rein. We're going to set our elbows. We're going to squeeze our abdomen. And here's the funny part. Here's the technical term. We're going to squeeze our buttocks, our seat. Our buttocks, you've heard of that. Yeah. It's like the top of your thigh. So if I'm walking along and I squeeze my thigh, my horse's back can't flow. So I'm going to limit my hips and I limit his range of motion. So when I want to walk forward, I sit tall, 
like I'm being lifted up with a string out of the saddle, and I move my hips back to front. Now, if he doesn't respond of the hip, I could reinforce it with a leg, a driving aid, like a leg or a whip. Or, but the idea is he's going off of me lifting, getting tall, active, and moving my seat. I'm going to move my seat less. Ready? So my seat's going to move less. I'm going to squeeze the rein like water out of a sponge. I'm going to tighten up my abdomen, and I'm going to squeeze my buttocks, but I'm going to do it in an ask and release manner. And look what I got. Now to go forward, I sit up, and my hips swing. So walking is very front to back motion. Something like canter is going to be my inside sit bone forward, 